Hola mi gente and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am so excited because this is my first video of the new year. 2020 is going to be a great year guys. I can already feel it. And today I'm going to be trying out new makeup that has launched recently this year. Okay, so you already know that I went to Ulta to get the new makeup. And this is all drugstore makeup that I got. So, what I got was the new Maybelline New York Dream Radiant Liquid Hydrating Foundation. I got it in the number 75. Now, this foundation cost $12.99. According to Maybelline's website, this new foundation is medium coverage. And it says, a lightweight foundation formulated with hyaluronic acid and collagen Hydrate the smooth skin while delivering a medium coverage foundation finish for the look of plump skin. So, it has something that's really good actually. Hyaluronic acid really hydrates the skin. And collagen helps keep the elasticity of the skin. The only thing that worries me is I love hyaluronic acid in um, my skincare. But I do have like an oily T-zone right now. So, I'm a little scared that... Since it's such a hydrating foundation, it will not keep at bay with my oil. But we'll see. It could be surprised always. And this comes in 20 shades. When I went to my Ulta, I'm pretty sure they had less. I'm not sure though. No, they had all of them. I kind of wish they did a little bit more of a shade range. Or like a little bit more of olive tone foundation because yesterday when I went to go look for my tone and my foundation color, it was hard for me because it either was like a little too light or if I went a little deeper, it was a little too like orangey looking. All right, also got the Maybelline Fall Slash of Mascara. It's supposed to be waterproof and give you volume and dramatic length so yeah. now the mascara will cost $10.49 which is pretty decent there are better priced mascaras out there so let's see if this one's really worth it and then I got the NYX high glass collection I was so excited about this like you guys don't understand as soon as I saw it pop up on my Instagram page that NYX was releasing this collection. I got really excited because I just love a glow. Now, I only cannot get one product, which I was so upset about because that was the one I was looking most forward to, which was the finishing powder. If you have seen my other videos, you guys know I like like a glowy finishing powder. I usually use the Jaclyn Hill one for like the fronts of my cheeks and under my eyes just to give life back to the skin. But they did not have my skin tone available. They had light, medium, and deep in my Ulta. Let me check if they had more. I don't think NYX launched more. Let me check on the website right now. Yeah, they only had light, medium, and deep. And I was medium and they didn't have it anymore. Like, I guess also only had like a little bit and I put it into their new section and it went out like this. But I did get the rest. I got the High Glass Face Primer, which I'm very excited about. It looks very nice in pictures. The only thing I'm worried about is if it's way too metallic looking or glittery. I might not be able to put it all over my face just because I have texture. And that's not really a good idea to do that with texture, but we'll see. This face primer I got in Rose Quartz, which is the medium shade. The other two are in Moonbeam, which is the light, um, light face primer for lighter skin tones. And then for the deeper skin tones, it will be Sandy Glow. Then I got the High Glass Luminating Powder, which would be the highlight. Got that in daytime halo, which is the medium tone. Again, they had light, medium, and deep. And then I got the radiant finish Finny. I don't even know what that says. Now the primer 
The primer cost $17, which is a little bit expensive for um, Juxter, I think, in my opinion. And then the highlighter cost $12, which is pretty okay priced. And then last but not least, I got the Born to Glow Concealer. I had to get this, I knew it right off the bat because a lot of people raved about the Born to Glow foundation which was nice and lightweight. A lot of people loved it, especially for the summer. So I knew I had to try this concealer, especially because under my eye area, over the time I have realized I can't use drying concealers. It's just horrible, it makes my under eye area look cakey. I just can't. So I'm very excited about this because it's radiant. I'm pretty sure it's hydrating. This cost $9, which is very, it's a very good price in my opinion. So I got this in 7.5, which is soft beige. And let's see how it goes. So I already have my eyebrows done. Just gonna Put my hair back. Okay, so let's start off with the foundation. And I'm gonna apply this with a beauty blender. Just because it's a liquid foundation, it'll be way easier to apply that way. Oh shoot! Oh my god, I almost forgot the primer. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Don't mind me. All right, so let's test out the primer on my hand so this is how it looks like and then I'm just look at how glowy that is I mean personally I think that's too glowy to put all over my face so but I do think it'll be really nice to like highlight right here to put it under your foundation and wherever you want to be glowy but that's just for me personally. If you rub it in really well, it gives kind of a hydrating look. Now just for the sake of this video, I am gonna put it all over my face. Hopefully I don't look too oily by the end of this or by the end of the day. If I just put a little bit, I think I can make it work. So. It does have a smoothing feeling to it. Huh. It didn't leave my skin that glowy. Like I thought it was like on my hand. I got a little scared there, I'm not gonna lie. Huh. Okay. Interesting. That was a pleasant surprise right there. I got scared, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. That was interesting. It just gives like a nice little sheen glow. Now I'm gonna go in with my Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid Foundation in 75. And I'm just gonna. Yep. <laughs> I did get my right foundation color. Thank God. Because we all know that. The lighting in Ulta and Sephora does not help for <laughs> picking out your foundation colors. Now I would say it is really medium coverage. Yeah, it's not too light. I personally like a little bit more coverage because of my acne scars and my acne. But sometimes it is nice not to have that much coverage on your skin if you want to look way more natural. And what you could do with these type of foundations is if you really want more coverage, you could just go over the area or you could spot conceal with a concealer that matches your skin tone. Don't use the lighter concealer to conceal your scars or acne. It will just draw the attention there because it's brighter than your skin. I learned that the hard way when I first started getting into makeup because I just thought, oh, let me just put concealer on it. And I will use the lighter concealer. 
and oh my god that just made everything way worse like in my forehead i have no problem looking it looks really nice on my forehead because i do not have that many like pimples if anything i have little tiny bumps there but it's on my cheeks and chin where i mostly have problems and above my lips so i'm just gonna go over it where i want more coverage which is right here and it does build up nicely i would say that it's a very nice natural finish foundation i'm just gonna go on my nose Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it's me, but this foundation has like an interesting smell to it. It smells a little off. Not off, it just, I don't know, it has a distinct smell to it that I'm not used to. Now that that's done, so far I kind of do like this foundation, it's nice and natural. And then with the primer, I don't know if you can see it's like glowy. I'm curious to see how this wears though. Now I'm gonna go in with the concealer. And again, hopefully we got the right shade because, and it is like a little puff, like they said. It's very interesting. It reminds me of the Maybelline um, eraser concealer. Like it's like an OG. It has a, just a bigger puff to it. So I'm gonna see that right off the bat. So you just squeeze a little bit on and then I don't want to put too much because I don't know how full coverage this is. Hmm. I mean, it's not that full coverage in my opinion. It's pretty medium and I got 7.5. I'm just putting it where I have my dark circle. It is blending in really nicely though. Hmm. I wonder how this will look. Maybe let's try building it up. Cause there's some that you can't build up. I just wanna see. This one will cake if I build it up. And just because I want a little bit more coverage. I mean, it is very hydrating though, which I like about it. Cause like I said previously, my skin does not like um dry concealer like most people like the l'oreal infallible i had tried that out way before um i think i started my youtube channel and oh my god that was so bad for me everybody else loves it most of them do like many youtubers do but i i just could not because when i put it on my skin it was so dry and you could see my wrinkles. And I don't have a lot under my eye. I hated it. It just increased the texture. I just could not. Which is why I like how hydrating this is. Like I could barely feel it. On my nose. Just. You know. To highlight what I want to highlight. I don't like to put concealer on my chin or on my forehead personally so this is definitely a medium coverage but it is very hydrating i like that oh that's real let me conceal my eyes lids because i like to use my concealer as primer for my eyeshadow because it conceals everything for me all right now I'm just gonna powder my face with a setting powder. Again, I'm still upset because I didn't have get to get the the one that came with the NYX collection, but it is what it is. And then right now I'm just taking out the creases. I'm gonna take a little brush. I'm using my Morphe G17, but you can take any fluffy brush you have. And I'm concealing my eyelid just so it won't crease for me while I do the rest of my face. And then the same under the eye. And then I'm going to take a nice big fluffy brush and then just set 
the rest of my face. I always like to set the rest of my face because I use bronzer to contour my face and I like it to have a nice powdered face so it could blend easily with my skin. I especially like to powder my nose because that's the place where I get the most oily. I know I'm about to look ridiculous right now, but I'm going to take my sponge and just bake right at my lash lines. Because Jesus, that is the first thing to crease when I do my makeup. I think that's the only place where I creased, just right here. And I hate it. And it's because um I naturally smile a lot and I laugh a lot, so I can't help myself. It's just who I am. So I just bake here the longest time possible because the more you bake, the longer your makeup's gonna stay in place for there. I'm just gonna Put the powder under my eye, just a little bit stamping it in to make sure that concealer is really set. So let's bronze up the face. Meanwhile, this is baking really quickly because we want to get to the highlighter and the setting spray. So let's get to it. Jack on the Hill setting powder since I don't have the next one. All right, and now it's time for the highlighter. Let's go in. Okay, let's see how this tests out. So I'm just gonna go. Right where I want it to highlight. Ooh, it's very subtle. That was gonna be more glowy than that. But it's not really that glowy. Interesting. Now I'm gonna do the other side. Hmm. It's like pretty natural. I would say like a nice little subtle glow is not too strong right off the bat right and now I'm just gonna highlight the tip of my nose and the bridge the center of my brow again this is very like subtle that was gonna be a little bit more like here I'll swatch it for you guys I should have the back of my hand. Like, okay. I mean, it is pretty subtle. Like, I'm gonna put my Mailing Master Chrome right next to it. Let's see if. Yeah, look at Maybelline, then next. Maybelline, next. It's for when you want more of a natural glow. Okay. So, you know what, I think I'm not gonna do my eyeshadow today, keep it natural with the rest of the look, but I am going to test out the mascara. Open this bad boy up. Now, honestly, I am going to curl my lashes, cause... So let's test this out. Now, this is how it looks, curved. In the middle and then tapered on the outsides so let's see if it does its job of volume because my lashes they are very small i hate them i'm being honest like i wish i was like one of those people who could just wear mascara you could definitely tell the difference between this eye and the other so so far so good Gonna do the other eye now. Now 
Now, with these brushes, you do got to be careful for the under eye because it is pretty big, the brush, for your under eye area. Another, another thing I'm noticing is it's transferring to the top of my lid. You see that right there? And, like, it's where it's smudging on doesn't want to get off. All right, now I'm just gonna pop on some lashes and I'll be right back. Okay, mi gente, so this is the end result. I popped on some lashes from ColourPop. I think I put on, I don't remember actually. But it's not um the Minx or the Dan lashes. It's, why is it not here? I don't know, but it doesn't have the name on it. And then I put on Strike It Rich Lip Set from ColourPop. And then I put Kylie Slept On High Gloss on top. Just to not make my lips look dry. And here you go. Overall, I think the foundation is really nice. I like the concealer because it's nice and hydrating. And it's perfect for the people out there who don't like a full coverage moment. Or when you don't want a full coverage all the time it's not drying it blends out very easily same with the foundation it's nice and hydrating it blends out really nicely it builds up well and it looks pretty nice i like it the highlighter i wish it was a little bit more boom like it's missing that oomph to it but it is nice for somebody who doesn't want something that's a lot of highlight but me personally i like to go a little bit brighter with my highlight the mascara it was okay it was nothing out of this world it was like a basic mascara um i don't like how easily it went on to the upper part of my lashes because it's like very wet and then since it's waterproof it just it's harder to take off so that's a little precaution there I think I like the L'Oreal Lash Paradise and the Sally's Mascara a little bit better. The primer I do like. Um, it's it looks like a lot, but it's not actually. It doesn't it doesn't even emphasize my texture, which I thought right off the bat it was going to do, but it didn't. I was pleasantly surprised by that. Now I want to see if it keeps my oils at bay throughout the day. And now the only thing left to do is set my face. Let's see. Hmm. Nice spray. Okay. So guys, I am going to try to do a wear test today. However, it might be hard for me because I'm working today. So if I do decide to do one, it will be at the end of my shift, which is uh, 12 to 9. And right now it's 9.33 in the morning. See it right there. 9.33 in the morning. Okay, mi gente, I'm back. And as you can see, my oils have definitely come through. I look very reflective right now. And I kind of expected this. It's It was kind of obvious to me that it wasn't going to hold my oils at bay the best it could because everything's very hydrating and it's meant to make you look illuminated. Now, I'm actually pretty impressed by this foundation look because it has barely creased on the sides of my mouth and that's where I creased a lot telling you a lot because I smile a lot and I laugh a lot but this has not creased barely at all on my laugh lines the concealer um it creased you could tell right here like right on the under eye but I always crease there I've not found not yet one concealer that hasn't made me crease there but it did not make my under eye dry so that's um, this concealer would be good for somebody who doesn't have, who doesn't want that full coverage and that has like a drier under eye area. The primer is really nice, but it's not a good primer for when you want it to last a long time. It's good for like a short moment or maybe for somebody who has very dry skin. But for me personally, 
it doesn't suit my skin because I do get oily eventually throughout the day and I need my makeup to last and keep itself matte and then I don't think this was a good combination because this is very illuminating and then this is hydrating setting spray was nice nice and radiant um I would probably use that type of setting spray for when I have my whole face matte and I need some life back into my skin and yeah overall the fun I'm really impressed though about the foundation at last it lasted and kept up really well. Now, I'm not sure if this foundation alone could keep my oils at bay since I paired it with this illuminating primer. So, I think one of these, I'm gonna give this foundation a shot one more time just with my regular primer and test it out with this and see if it keeps my oils at bay. But yeah, that's my overall opinion. Oh, I forgot to show you the time. 9.33 p.m. I just wanted to show you guys that I wasn't lying. Oh, also one thing. um, My oils didn't come out until like 5 p.m. And at 5 p.m. when they started coming out, it just looked really like a healthy glow. And then it was starting to get like this. Alright guys, I am so happy that I got the chance to do this wear test. I hope you guys liked it and I hope this is helpful for you guys if you're considering buying these products if you have a uh, skin type like I do and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, bye guys!